to the church anyway so I figured why not bring the camera and actually videotape here familiar area that we're, we're all familiar with it is quite empty I will also tell you it's nice and cool in here I don't have to worry about heating it for anyone because I like it cool but thank you for being here with us today if you've never been here to Brooms Island this is what our church looks like at least up here let's pray Heavenly Father thank you thank you for who you are thank you that in the time of crisis you are our Savior. You are our blessed hope. Thank you. God, I pray that you'll be with your people in this time of trouble, in this time of turmoil. God, I pray that you'll bring peace. The peace that passes understanding. Bring your strength, your encouragement. We thank you for it. God, be with your people. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Let me just start off with an opening scripture for you. It's found in Romans uh, chapter 8. Here's what it says, starting with verse 18. It says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation, that's us, waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration. Are you feeling frustrated right now? Not by its own choice but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up into the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. Remember, we're not redeemed yet. Our bodies have not been redeemed. Our salvation is true when we go into heaven. For in this we hope, for in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we will wait for it patiently. Amen. Amen. Today's message is looking forward. Looking forward. I, I decided to go a little bit, well, I didn't decide. I felt led by the Holy Spirit to go outside of what the, the message that we've been doing is we've been walking through the Old Testament. We left off there with Abraham and Sarah about to have a, their child. But God led me down this path, and I want to take you there as well. So, we don't know what tomorrow holds. It seems like every day we have a new press release uh, going out telling us what we can and what we can't do, what we should and should not expect, and how things are going to unfold. Uh, just now we found out that here in Maryland that our kids will be out of school for at least another four weeks. To be determined. So things, uh, we're, we're, trying, we're wondering when our kids will go back to school, if they go back to school at all. When will we go back to work? Uh, who will watch our kids? Will, will I ever be able to buy toilet paper again? These are the things that, that are on our minds today. And I find it interesting, I've mentioned this before, that in American Christianity, we've gone away from We've gone away from desiring God. We've gone away from desiring to go to heaven. Heaven is a great ending for us. I'm here to tell you right now, that is our beginning. That is truly our beginning. That's where the salvation that I, I read out of Romans, 
That's when it truly comes to pass. What we're hoping for comes to pass. But as I've dealt with people, especially thinking of, of youth groups and, and young people in, in today's uh, American Christianity, how when you'd say to them, are you excited to go to heaven? Well, as, as long as it happens after I graduate high school, after I, I find the guy or the girl of my dreams, after we get married, have our 2.5 kids, I've been successful and, and grown to a ripe old age, that's when I'll be ready for Christ to come again. Or if we're in troubles, I, I know many young people at a time of an important exam that perhaps they hadn't applied themselves appropriately to study for, we would definitely be praying for God to come. But it's interesting now with this COVID-19, how it's changed our perspective. I heard a commentator speaking that 2020 is going to be the year of asterisks. The year of asterisks where I graduated high school in 2020. Asterisks. I didn't quite do all the number of classes I needed to do, but a governor said it was okay. Graduated college in the year 2020 with an asterisk. Again, because things might not have been fulfilled the way they were originally planned to be fulfilled. The year of asterisks. I've, I've read on, on Facebook of people who uh, were planning to be married. They had their, their rings already inscribed with the date. And then they weren't able to have this large wedding that they wanted to have. And, and this year has turned us upside down. And we're only in March. I'm here to tell you that Perhaps, perhaps God wants to get our attention because we've been so focused on us. We've been so inwardly focused. We've been so thinking about ourselves. What can we do? How can we be better? How much more money can I make? How many more cars can I buy? How much whatever that we need to start focusing on the outside. I've said it before and it doesn't happen, but wouldn't it be interesting if we're in that line to get into heaven? That line that have had many comic strips written about it with St. Peter there. And there was the line for heaven and the line for hell. And you saw your co-worker in the line for hell and they looked at you and said, Why didn't you tell me about Jesus? Well, we were too busy. We were too busy trying to make money. Too busy trying to do this. Too busy trying to do that. We need to change our focus so that we're focused on God. The Bible tells us that we're new creations. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to, to change our minds. Our minds are no longer supposed to think as the world thinks, but we're supposed to think heavenly. And see, too many people see heaven as this place we're going to go and, and sit on clouds with harps, and that's nothing what it's going to be like. Nothing. I was thinking about this virus, the COVID-19, how it spreads by contact people to people touching. We have this six foot distance that we're supposed to keep from each other. Uh, perhaps if someone sneezes or coughs <clears throat> into their hand and then they touch something, the germs can live on, on these surfaces for uh, long periods of time, just as any germs could. But these germs uh, specifically they're concerned about, so uh, there they are and, and you leave them there and then the next person touches it and then they touch their face and now that person's infected. I know a lot of people have taken to the outdoors, they're, they're walking, riding their bikes, etc. And like, hey, I'm in the outdoors, what could possibly go wrong? Have you ever been outside and smelled smoke that someone was smoking? Or with, with the vaping, uh, uh, you, you smell the sweet, sweetness of it and it's going in your nose. You're breathing air that someone has already exhaled. Now those are examples that we know about it because you can smell the smoke. You can smell the sweet scent of whatever uh, people are vaping with. But in every day, our air comes into our lungs, it goes out, and it just goes. So even as you're outside, the wind can be carrying other people's germs out there. So just be cautious, but I just find it interesting. That this thing spreads to all these people. And so the answer for, for us here in Maryland, they, they said we're not going to at this point, and, and I'm, I'm recording this on Friday, March 27th. It's almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
At this point, they haven't locked everybody down and set up checkpoints. I was speaking to my parents in Florida. My aunt lives out uh, way south in Florida. Uh, and, and in that county, they have checkpoints to get onto the island. Checkpoints. If you don't have a legitimate purpose, you're turned around and sent out. We're not there yet here in Maryland. Our, our governor has decided to just shut everything down. Uh, and hopefully no one will go out because there's nowhere to go. But if you stay away from it, if you were to live in a bubble, I, I was thinking of the John Travolta movie from the 80s where the boy in a bubble, I think is what it was called, boy in a plastic bubble, I'm not sure what it was. But I thought of that, how this boy he had something wrong and he had to be in the bubble because he couldn't be with other people, he couldn't have that, that contact with other people because it would just kill him. And that's how it is with this COVID-19, not that we all need to live in bubbles, but if you're quarantined, it won't get to you. It won't get to you. Same thing is true with sin. You ever thought about that? You ever wondered how Noah walked righteously while the whole world was so bad off that God decided he needed to destroy it by flood? Yet, God found Noah to be righteous. Perhaps it was because he quarantined himself. Perhaps it was because he guarded himself. And I think guard is an excellent word to use in this because this is how sin gets a hold of us. Because we don't guard ourselves anymore. We're too busy living life. We're too, too just going through the motion of what we're supposed to do that we have quit looking. We have quit guarding against sin. I think of basketball. I actually played basketball back in my younger days. I wasn't that great at it, but I enjoyed the sport. And I remember you would, you would box your person out, keep them out so that they couldn't get the ball. If you're on defense, you're just boxing them out. Don't let them get to it. What would happen if we started to play that way? Not play that way, but if we lived our life that way. And we started to defend against sin. Guard it against sin. See, we're not guarding against it. We live a life... We see things on TV or the internet. We, we come in contact with sin through people that we have contact with through our conversations, again, in an unguarded manner. We just don't even see it coming. Sin creeps into our minds. Sin creeps into our minds. I'm not saying that we should, as Christians, avoid contact with anyone else. Jesus said quite the opposite. He said we're to go into the world. And to spread the good news, spread his love to everyone. But in the same sense, we're to stay clean as we do it. We are to stay clean. We need to stay guarded against sin. Here's how James 1, 14 through 15 puts it this way. It says, but each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. See, we see something, we hear something, we read something, we, we are touched by someone, and we're led away by our own evil desire, and we're enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, after that's built up, we ponder it. Right there, the guarding's not taking place. We're pondering things. We're thinking about things. We're scheming things. After the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. This is why in Scripture, if we were going with points, point one is dealing with sin. It says This says in 1 Corinthians 5, 6-13, it gives us a whole section on how to deal with the immoral brother, Christian. How to deal with that immoral brother. Verse 6 says, your boasting is not good. So evidently they were boasting about having this immoral person with them. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? I think again to the coronavirus. COVID-19. I think how it came over here to America. I don't know who was the first person. I don't know who was the first person to have contact overseas 
whether it was from China, whether it was from Italy, I don't know. We, we didn't know to test for it until it was too late. I don't know who the first one was, but if that person never came to America and no one with this virus ever came to America, America would not be dealing with this. This, this is not a political statement. Far from it. I'm just showing you that if we stay separated from the world as far as this goes with sin in our lives, we will not become infected like that. So just as a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough, it says, get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival with the old bread leavened with malice and I'm sorry, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. He's talking about the Passover, which is coming up soon. And it goes back to the time of Exodus where the death angel came and it passed over the houses that had the blood upon the doorpost. It passed over them. And they ate bread that was unleavened because they were to be quick to leave. And through and leaven is the same as yeast. And yeast throughout scripture is represented as sin. And that's what he's saying here is to get rid of it. Because just a little bit, if you've ever done any amount of baking, and you don't put a whole lot of yeast in. You can make this big loaf of bread with a little bit of yeast, a pinch of yeast, and it will rise. And that's what he's talking about with sin. When sin enters our life, it'll rise. When sin enters the church, when we allow it in the church, and we just go, ah, we're not going to deal with that. Ah, we're not going to deal with this. We're not going to... Then it becomes throughout the entire batch. Verse 9, he says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of the world who are immoral or greedy or swindlers or idolaters. In that case... You would have to leave this world. So he was telling them, look, I told you to stay away from sexually immoral people. But he wasn't talking about the world. He was talking about the people who were claiming to be brothers and sisters in Christ, living sexually immoral lives. And he said that you were to, to not have dealings with these people. But now I'm writing you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or a sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater, or slanderer, a drunkard, or swindler. Do not eat with such people. What business is, is it of mine to judge outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside, but expel the wicked person from among you. Dealing with sin. Talking about quarantine, talking about guarding ourselves. A scripture that most Christians know is Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I can't tell you how many times I've quoted that scripture, just right, rolls right off the tongue and, and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes we don't stop and think about what we're saying. We don't stop and think about we just say that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Think about what was just said. The wages of sin. What is a wage? What is a, wa a wage is when you're paid, right? You do a week of worth of work, you get a week worth of pay. You do two weeks of worth of work, you get however your payment is done. The wage is your compensation. The wage is is your just or due compensation, what you should have earned for the work that you've done. It's what we have earned. Think about that for a minute. For what you have earned because of sin is death. You earned it. We, we, we forget that sometimes. Oh, uh, the wages of sin? We've earned it. Through our lives, we've earned it. So let's think about that for a minute. I broke some stuff down here. Dissension. And these are all from scriptures. Dissension. Coming against the... 
dissension has earned you death. Woo, just got serious. Hold on. Jealousy has earned you death. Strife. Strife. Causing others to be upset over things. Causing others just to be... Strife has earned you death. Deceit. Come on, y'all. April 15th is coming. Deceit has earned you death. Malice. Have you ever thought about what malice means? It's when you intentionally cause harm to someone else. Intentionally harming others through our words, through our actions, through our Facebook posts, our Instagrams, our tweets, our whatever. Malice has earned you death. Gossip. Oh, Pastor, it wasn't gossip. I was just giving a prayer request. Pastor, it wasn't gossip because it was true. Gossip is when you're telling someone something about someone else that is not positive and uplifting. That's what gossip is. And gossip has earned you death. No matter your reason. No matter your justification for your sin. Arrogance. Hmm. Well, we're familiar with the song, How Great Thou Art. Yeah, How Great Thou Art, but we're too busy singing How Great I Art. We're not singing about God, we're singing about ourselves. We're telling everybody about how good we are. Arrogance, which goes right into boasting or pride, has earned you death. Greed has earned you death. Envy has earned you death. Adultery has earned you death. Any sexual immorality has earned you death. Hatred has earned you death. Fits of rage. Mm, maybe some self-control issues has earned you death. Self-ambition has earned you death. We talked about sexual immorality, but Apostle Paul wanted to make it extremely clear. He said even the hint of sexual immorality has earned you death. Obscene talk has earned you death. Of course, joking has earned you death. So much so that Galatians chapter 5 verse 21 tells us that, that those Christians who live like this, all these things I've listed for you, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, but I thought... Oh, Galatians, let's turn there. Galatians chapter 5. Here's what it says. Galatians chapter 5, starting with verse 21. Well, it's just verse 21. I'll, I'll read you from 19. Let's go back to 16. So I say live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit is what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. This wasn't written... To the people of Galatia, just the general public. This was written to the church, speaking to the Christians. 
Romans chapter 6, 23, I said this earlier, it said, for the wages or, or the compensation, what you have earned, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That should cause you to shout. That should give you excitement and joy to know that there's a way out of our wickedness. There's a way out of our sinfulness. Because it is His gift to us. We're getting ready to come into the Easter time, the resurrection time where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, where He was put upon a cross, crucified for our sins. He died. Because that's what God said. It had to be death of a perfect lamb in order to take away the sins of the earth. But then he also rose again. And he sits in power with, with God. Point number two, the gift of God is eternal life. Remember what Romans 8, 35 through 39 says. It says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble? Shall hardship, mm -mm. persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, COVID-19, being stuck in the house with your whole family? No, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things. And all the adversity, and all the trials, and all the things we're going through, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen to me. We should be praising God that nothing can separate us from His love. We need to stay true to Him, stay true to His love. So how are we supposed to live? Pastor, you've laid out some stuff. Maybe I've said some stuff that you didn't like. Maybe I've said some things that offended you. Okay. The scripture says it will offend. How are we supposed to live then? Galatians 5, 22 through 26 says this. It says we should be living with the fruit of the Spirit. See, fruit comes on a tree. Tree grows, fruit is there, you pick it off and you enjoy it. Or you sell it. But it grows on the tree based on what the tree is. So fruit is a natural thing that comes from the tree, from the bush. That, that's how the fruit comes. It's natural. So this is saying if you are in the Spirit of God, this should be your fruit. It shouldn't even be something you have to strive for. This should be what you look like naturally. Listen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That's how we do it. We crucify the sinful nature. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Philippians 4 verse 8 says it this way. It says, finally, brothers and sisters. It actually says it, brothers and sisters. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think, on these things. Just like the virus, we need to stay quarantined from sin. We need to keep, we need to guard against sin. We need to be purposeful 
and keeping sin out of our lives. That's what I'm encouraging you to do today. Just as this virus is spreading around and, and it's, it's causing fear in people's lives and causing people to, to be distraught. Listen, that's what sin should be doing. Sin is fun. I mean, let's just call it what it is. If sin wasn't fun, nobody would want to do it. Sin is fun. Sin's exciting. But there's a cost to it. You earn something through your sin. And that's death. People need to wake up. God calls us to make disciples. Calls us to let people be aware. What a perfect time. As people are distraught, as people are trying to figure out what's going on in life with this COVID-19, what a time for us as the body of Christ, as the church, to tell them the truth. Because too many people are dying and going to hell. Not because of the virus, but because of sin. Because of what sin does to us. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to look around and say, you know what? I've been too focused on me. I need to be focused on others. I need to be focused on what's going on in other people's lives. I need to be focused so that people will know that Christ is the ruler of my life. That he reigns in my life. How awesome. How awesome of a chance that this is for us to spread the good news of, of God. Not, not to be all distraught or upset about what's going on. Listen, listen. The Bible tells us that it's appointed for man to die. We all know we're going to die at some point. Paul put it this way. He said, look, the only reason I'm still here on earth is for you. If it was up to me, I'd go to heaven. Far better. Far better. Maybe this COVID-19 has woken you up and you're like, you know what? Heaven is far better. Not just because of this COVID-19, but heaven is far better than anything you can imagine here. Imagine your best day here, your best vacation you could ever have. Heaven is far better. Created the entire universe. He can take care of you. Heaven is a good place. We should be recruiting people nonstop. Letting people know exactly what God has done for us. How he's removed the sin in our lives. Let's continue on guarding against sin. Quarantining against sin. Stay, and again, don't take that quarantine as though you're not supposed to be out in a sinful world. Because that's how we reach the lost. But guard your heart. Guard your family's heart. May God be praised. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for this message that you put on my heart. And God, I pray that your people will receive it. God, that they'll receive it and understand, Lord, that you want us to be busy about your kingdom's work. God, that you didn't call us to be idle, God. That we have earned death. Every human being alive has earned death. That's what we have, have earned through our sin. But your gift, your gift of eternal life is for us. It's for them. Help us to be, to be messengers of the good news. Thank you for it, God. I pray that you'll be with your people. Bring them peace in this time of trouble. May your spirit be on them. May your Holy Spirit give them a fresh anointing right where they are right now. Lord, for every family that's represented here in this church of Brooms Island Community Church, may you, may you bless them, may you keep them, may you hold them tight in your hands. God, keep your people. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you. Brooms Island Community Church. I miss you guys. We'll be back together again before you know it. Pray for one another.
If you don't have a directory, reach out to me. I'll send you one. But pray for one another. Call each other. What a great time to just pick up the phone and say, how are you doing? I'm trying to reach out to each one of you uh, throughout the week. And uh, as each week goes on that we're not meeting together, trying to reach out to you and just make sure you're doing okay. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Uh, my family's all doing well. Thank you. Uh, many of you have asked. But yes, everybody, Tina, Josh, and Hannah are all doing well. We're doing good in the house. We're not uh, going nuts or anything like that. We are very blessed. And I just pray that God will continue to bless you. God will look out for you and keep you. And that uh, if there's anything you need, just let us know. We have a church body that is here for you. I, I can't tell you how many people when I call around are saying, hey, if anybody needs help, let, let me know. I will, I will get them groceries. I'll get them what you, whatever they need. So if you need something, please reach out. We'll, we'll get you what you need. We don't need you to uh, expose yourself uh, unnecessarily, which is why we're not meeting. Okay, as soon as we can, we'll be back in here. I miss eating with you guys. I miss celebrating with everyone. But God is in control. He has you. Amen. God bless you.